Oh no, I spelled hello wrong. I, sorry, I meant to say hello everyone. And um, I know Verpy. <laughs> Finland, Funland, that's great. Hi Tim. Hi Eric. Welcome. I was going to um, talk about some of the portraits that uh, I've been doing. And there's a uh, one just to my right and that is my uh, granddaughter Brianna and uh, when I do these things I, I um, paint in layers because so that the color can travel through the layers but when I say layers I mean like I put in a glaze and then the light goes through and creates new optical colors um, because we're, we're more than the physical colors that our body is or what we wear. And real healing happens on those more subtle, invisible planes of the colors that we are. And when I was doing um, mental color therapy, that's what we focused on was the invisible aspects of the color. And we would visualize um, different colors having different healing aspects. And if you go back to Brianna's um, portrait, there's um, a lot of real gold leaf in there because that brings in the sun energy. And um, she, said, she said to me when I showed it to her, she went, Nana, why have you made me a fairy? <laughs> and... Uh, I said, because you're special. You, you do have wings, but you don't know that you've got wings. <laughs> oh. And I I remember Sarah when she was um, little, well, not tiny, but probably about eight. I think it was about eight. Anyway, between eight and ten, I um, started going to to Lily, the person that, um, the healer that I studied with for over 10 years in color therapy. And so she was taking care of the children. And you usually lie on a bed and she'll um, put her hands here. And when she was doing that with Sarah, who was absolute treasure, blonde little punk, pigtails and big blue eyes. And um, Lily said to her, Sarah, do you see fairies? And she goes, mm-hmm. She says, not everyone sees fairies. Mm-mm. And Lily would say, it's a very special thing to see fairies because they have different jobs. There's water fairies, and there's air fairies, and earth fairies, and, well, everything has a special fairy apparently and um, less and less are they being needed because people aren't thinking that there are fairies that take care of the plants in Finhorn where I've gone and I painted Eileen Caddy's portrait and they know that the fairies are there and they work together with them and they're very very special stories i have um my contemplation meditation being is up there too yeah there's a story about their fairies one of their gardeners is called jock and one day he came in to the main hall and was so angry and Arlene and Peter and Dorothy were all there and many other people saying, what's the matter? What's the matter? He says, oh, the fairies are fed up with human beings because you went and cut the gorse down and you didn't ask them for their permission. So Peter, who had given the order to cut the gorse down without asking, had to go and have Jock as his um, interpreter and say, well, I promise, I really promise <laughs> never again. 
will I um, do that without asking you? So with my children, I always um, raise them to um, I raise them to uh, ask when they cut a flower, may I have permission? Or if you're going to cut down a tree or a branch, tell them you're going to do it and also ask them because it's their home, one of them at least. And it's just magic. Hi, Ida. Hey, Karen, how are you doing? Hi, Isabel. I'm just going to say hi to a few people. Matthew Gilmore, what do you mean? What an intro. <laughs> okay, you can tell me later. Everyone's saying hi to everyone else. Who is in the portrait? Verbi, I was saying that's my granddaughter, Brianna. She was, she took a selfie once that I went, wow, that's really an incredible, almost abstract selfie. And um, so I did a portrait based on that photograph. Yeah. But back to the fairies at the moment. Thank you, Erica. I had, I was in this one house and uh, hi Sirius. Hi, Umberto. Gosh, hi, Lisa and Isabel. Daniello, you made it. Maurizio. Hi, Daniello again. Hi, Etta. Hi, Audrey. What I want to say is that I had a friend staying with me, and instead of just a month, she wound up staying for a very long time. And she was um, doing this study course on light and energy and pendulums. And we always were very on the same page until one day I went out to Tesco's to do our shop, weekly shop. And when I got back, she went, oh, it's been so difficult. It was so difficult. And I said, what? And she says, oh, there were so many fairies and everything I had. I, I, just to get rid of them, it was so hard. And I went, you know, I told them this was a sanctuary and we'd really work together and the garden would be um, just happy, happy. So anyway, that is uh, some of the things I got up to and still do. But um, Daniela, the Indian painting you mean behind me not there over here it's like driving a car in England I always get the wrong side of the tr the road um, there isn't a name she just is <laughs> hi Torsten Torsten I am very well today and I am very 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 happy Daniela, that's fine. My Italian's terrible. <laughs> Brianna now is 14. She was considerably younger when I did, did that portrait. Oh. Do I have a bucket list? Well, that's interesting. Really interesting. I have a pre-bucket list. And it started um, a while ago when I um, lived in a house called Old Bilsham Farmhouse that had lots of studios and everything. And my inner guide said I had to um, sell it because I was identifying too much with all the sculptural aspects, relief aspects I did in all the rooms and everything as me. So that took a while for me to accept to do that. And then it took a while for it to sell. And in the middle of that, I was getting really frustrated because 
I had gone through this letting go process to accept the inner voice. <laughs> and then I had to come back and say, okay, I'll stay here. It was such a crazy um, process, I have to say. And then I used to um, exhibit in San Francisco in October Gallery for seven years. And uh, when I was in the airport, because I traveled backwards and forwards, I'd always have my materials showing how I could do this interior decorating, living walls of sculpture. And when I didn't have it anymore, that trip to San Francisco was like, oh, who am I? I see what the guides really, why they wanted me to do that, because my life is about finding who I am and to live and create from that place. So there have been a lot of different um, processes, and they're still going on. COVID certainly has got me running around the house, that's for sure. And um, I'm sure everyone else is. It's it's just remarkable how it is so global. And the tension and the challenge. I And the thing was, is that when it first started, and I'm 71, so I'm in that group that of elders that I'm supposed to stay home. And um, the energy coming down from what I just referred to as above, um, was so powerful like it's been building for two three years and now I had said yes and now it was so strong I I couldn't even lift a paintbrush I had to sit down and meditate and feel that energy because it it starts to raise your vibration when you're in my sort of visionary life journey and it would be for you too. It's um and then the world was getting it and all this tension was happening. But I really believe that it's here for us to grow and I really look forward to you guys all growing. <laughs> the whole world needs to grow. Because I want to just go out without thinking that, oh my god, I might die, you know, or I'll get COVID or it's driving me crazy, so I'm not really going out. <laughs> I just stay home. Uh, what we all have to do in order to love more. It's, I really believe in the evolution of our consciousness and where humanity is being taken. Though it seems like we're in the mud, but um, there's this other really great energy that's just there waiting encouraging inspiring just listen for it but i want to tell you um so anyway one of my bucket lists was to go to hawaii we had gone there several times and we'd only ever stayed there for probably two to three weeks because david would be going on tour we'd he had the Floyd on the Animals Tour done the South aspect and we wound up in LA. And so we went off to Kauai the first time we ever were there because that was one of our wishes to go there. And it's so special, very, very far away, I have to say. But it's um, just magic. The Aloha spirit is so much deeper than the word that you say there's so much comfort and love there and I, there's always wherever humanity is trouble but um and life can be challenging but there's a, a special thing about the natural force on those islands that's incredible let me look and see where we're at in the comments because i seem to be talking away tonight Hang on. There we go. What was your favorite item of clothing you had back in the 70s? Well, 
before I met David and before um, 71, I was um, a hippie, as you can imagine. <laughs> and I, um, uh, for all the concerts, I had this share outfit that was all peacock blue and green, like paisley design. Big flares is what she wore. And inside was pink fuchsia, really bright pink. And then I had this little tiny cami top and it had sleeves with bell bottom with the pink inside again. I loved that one. I didn't know what happened to it, but that was special. Hi, Wilson. Welcome. Phil, I almost forgot about your stream. I was so engrossed listening to some of Genesis pro, pro, pro rock material. I hope you're well. I'm well. How are you? Glad you made it. Oh, my good. Karen, where will you want to go first when COVID lockdown is over? Well, first I think I have to have a, remember how to drive. And then I have to feel safe in an airplane, though I, my whole life is about traveling and things. But you know, there's some Thailand. I've not been to Thailand and I haven't been to Bali. And I haven't been to South America, though they're a bit revolutionary at the moment. You know, Matsupushi up there. Actually, I haven't been to the pyramids yet either. There's just so much to do. Torsten, I want to say happy birthday to one of the best albums of the century. Wish you were here. It was released 45 years ago on September 15th. How amazing. So, if we had been still married, we probably would have been married for 45 years then, because, well, we got married on July 7th, 1975. So, um, thank you for that. It's one of my favorite albums, I have to say. Really beautiful. Lots of memories there. So Isabella's commenting, saying, yes, COVID has some lessons to teach us about the way we choose to lead our life. Yes, it does. I hope that we're all going to get it because we're the only species that doesn't um, take care of our environment as well as we should. And I don't know if you noticed it, but the sky has been clear and they've been saying that you could see the Alps and other mountains in South America and Animals have been coming down out of the mountains, going into people's gardens, because we're not out there. Um, and we're so special as a species, but we're just not paying attention. Just not valuing the same. And that's why I think the only way that we can wake up is for something to be so big the whole world is going through this. And that just proves to me that we're a collective, that we're in a, a evolution together to ascend. And so I focus on that. Every day I wake up and I say, okay, how will I use the special energy of being a human being? Even if I sit down and read a book or just walk around and cook my, oh my God, it's lunch now, I have to cook. And then it's dinner. And um, it's just uh, special to be able to know that my energy is helping your energy. That's what I do. Thank you, Armina. 
She loves to listen to me talk about my life. Yes, Phil Fleetwood Mac and John V live there. And also a lot of really special spiritual people. You know, they have certain gods and there's one called Pili. Maybe I didn't pronounce it in the Hawaiian way. But apparently the myth is that when you come to Hawaii, she is keeping an eye on the people that come. And if you are of a certain vibration or you are meant to be there in order to ascend, everything happens and you can you wind up staying there. But if you aren't, things happen that to the contrary. You might get sick, you might freak out, something else might happen, and she kicks you out, they say. So fortunately, I wasn't kicked out because <laughs> my bucket list wanted me to stay there. And I wound up staying there for nearly six months. It was so great. There is something called Lomi Lomi, which is a type of Hawaiian massage, and they sing while they're doing it. And it's it's like, a gentle massage, but some GN, I think her name was, I always saw her in every three weeks that we were there. And this time it was like, oh, I can stay longer and go deeper. And because, you know, we have this superficial tension and then we have tension inside that um, I just didn't have time to reach it. It was you'd feel the flowers, the scent of the flower and the wind and the rainbows and you'd have the massage and what tension we had in the southern aspect of the states of the animal tour was lifted and we had to start again. We had to do the northern part and that got really titchy. So my bucket list or pre-bucket list and staying there for six months was amazing because then I could get rid of some of the deeper life tensions that um, I had accumulated and they go into your cells and they hang in there. So that was bliss, staying there. Yeah, we were right on the beach. We stayed in Graham and Susan Nash's new house they had just built and redecorated. We were quite friend, good friends. And then on some days we'd go out and look for shells and there were these amazing big shells that were orange with streaks of white and yellow. They were a collector's item apparently. But most of all, on our first trip there with Alice, who was just the one, we were outside of this one, um, the one only down in Hanalei Bay near where we were staying, a restaurant. And um, this Hawaiian came out of, from the trees and he was holding this necklace, many strands of this necklace. And uh, he asked, David and I stood there and he said, do you want to buy this for your wife? And I looked at Dave and he said, how much? I can't remember how much, but these necklaces are rare and very valuable. And apparently there's shells from a particular island that I don't think even to this day that we Caucasian white Westerners or whatever you are, if you're not indigenous, you're not allowed on there. And I know that one of my other times going there, that those necklaces were very expensive. And it's it's a healing ne necklace for me. So whenever I go in the sun, I always wear it, take great care for it. So Alan, hi Ginger. I was wondering if you had an influence on Sir David and Pink Floyd with some of the lyrics and song rights. There's a lot of meaning in life and even spiritually integrated into Pink Floyd. Nice to know. Thank you. Well, Alan, 
I um, didn't participate in it in that way, like what Polly does with David. I think it's really special that they're doing that. Um, but I know that the happiness and the love that um, surrounded us in our lives, I've been just looking at all of our photographs again, we radiated joy. And of course, it's it's been a bit sorrowful going through these albums because I'm doing audio excerpts of the book, which are available on patreon.com forward slash Ginger Gilmore. Um, so that you, I'll, I'll read some of the excerpt in an audio with extra photographs over it. And then I do a little bit of live video. And I have to say, it was um, quite touching to see the happiness. And then, of course, all the difficulties with the band that came later and the build-up of that is just... Honestly, I don't know if I can do the later chapters, but I wrote them. And it is my life, and what I learned through that transition is to find who I was and what my message, my vision is, and my quest. And that's to create artwork that uplifts and to talk to you. And if you have any questions in a healing context or other than just Pink Floyd, please ask me. Or about art and colors and things like that because um, I would really like to help you. So, Deanna, hello sweet ginger. I always look forward to your lives in such a breath of fresh air instead of the craziness in the world. This is why I do this. Because that is our challenge, not to identify with the craziness. You can get really deep into it, if you like, but it destroys you. It, it, do you know what I found out? I've been watching this documentary on fatty liver, would you believe? I've discovered that the liver, I cannot believe. I always thought, well, it's just, even after years of working in the healing, I just couldn't believe what the liver does for us. It's huge. But you know what I found out? Apparently, fluoride, bromide, and bleach, chlorine, it um, numbs your pineal gland, which is the um, intuitive side or the creative side of who we are. And I thought, oh, I'm going to start looking at my toothpaste. And I know I was raised in America. We thought it was a virtue to have fluoride in our water. They're starting to change that now. But it's, um, have a look. Because if you're working particularly on a meditative path, it will be really important for you to um, check that out, make certain changes. Stacy, I love the picture of you and the white dog. That's Joe R. L. Station on the 1978 album. He's a special dog. And we also had a Saluki called Lisa. So Joe was in a way David's dog and Lisa was mine and but they loved each other and Yeah. They were quite a couple, those two. And they were around for a long time. Lisa Salukis used to sit in front of um, Egyptian temples. They cross their legs like this and they're very elegant and they run like the wind. They're amazing. Really special dogs. And I might, when the time comes, if I ever get another dog, I might get a Saluki again. They're full of heart. Sharon, I would love to go to New Zealand. That's another place that 
Matthew went there. I think he was there for about six months with a friend. And um, he was Japanese, or he might have been part Japanese. His mother was Japanese. And they would go out scuba diving and snorkeling and catch some um, tuna and bring it back. And she would prepare all these Japanese delicacies and stuff. And, and I was just talking to someone today. They just got back from there in the Maori. And I've always known and respected how they are so one with the sea, or is it an ocean, with nature in a different way. Their nature is different. But um, yes, I would love to come there. And Aaron had sent over a rainbow. Yes, we can do that. Valerie, such a magical life you had, and I am still having. Yes, I am. Life is magical. You just need the right perspective and the right focus. It's always there. From looking at a, the sun on the violets that are out right now, being autumn, the sun it, in England, the um, sunsets are getting earlier. Days get really short, and I just noticed this morning that oh my god, it just reminds me of when I went to out looking for antiques and stuff. When I first got here, I was working together with um, Jenny Mary, of, whose husband was in the humble pie and it was always dark 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 and it's like that i don't know about you in america but i remember it being dark in the morning going on the school bus did you ever have that certainly they, some kids would be doing it here that's for sure and then the sunset gets earlier do you know when i first came over here David had a Mocktober tutor house in Royden, in Essex. He didn't have any curtains on the windows. It was a love, he had a fireplace, but not um, double glazing like in America. So the wind came flying through and I would have to sit there with my coat on when, especially he went on an English tour and it was cold it was cold and then it was the long long nights didn't have a problem with nights but the thing is when you're on alone and the telly didn't come on till three o'clock and there were only four channels now maybe there was three at first bbc one and bbc two and itv he certainly didn't have Sky. <laughs> and certainly not as many channels in America as what I was used to. It was quite a time of getting used to many different things. And then there's the money. Getting used to the change, the pounds, the cents. But I think there were shillings then. They were just about turning that over to a new form of money. Yes, Dinky, it is true. We are not listening. But there's always hope. We have to work on the hope. We have to be the ones that have the hope. And watch your anger. Watch your sadness. Watch the screaming. Know when to discern when you say something. And when you don't, and most of the time, you teach by your example. Hi, Veronica. What's the question, Maurizio? A tricky question. Better a remorse or a regret? Is that a question? Hmm. Um... I suppose 
I think one of the, the inspirational thoughts that one of my teachers gave me was that I sooner live than exist. And sometimes that might have remorse. And the remorse I've discovered is an opportunity in order to um, change, to be more open, more loving, more clear-minded. Doesn't mean you, you're a doorstep that people step on, but um, you learned wisdom of how to discern. And I think sometimes people might have regret because somewhere in their soul awareness, they know that they need to, they shouldn't have done that or they should have done that. And you just learn from it. That's what growing, evolving is. I don't regret. The only thing I might regret. No, I can't even do that. I can't even. The only way I could regret, I was thinking that if I thought, well, maybe the future. But I remember there was a time when I had a little voice on this side saying, you got to do this. And this one would say, don't do this. You must, you know, be a free, loving person. And Oh, no, no, no. You have to be really, you know, selfish in that area. I can't even remember the example, but it was like a little devil and a little angel. And every time I listened to this one, things were difficult. Things would happen. I'd get sick or, I don't know, crazy stuff would happen. Every time I listen to this, sometimes it might be difficult because it means changing your thoughts and your pattern. But little by little over the years, this is the one I listen to. You know that saying, all you create and all you destroy? This one is a little gremlin. And this one makes sure that you create even in the art of living. So... I'm really sorry to hear that, Phil. He had liver and kidneys are very important organs, Ginger, and I should know I had cancer in one of my kidneys and lost one due to cancer. But you're okay now, aren't you? Well, I know I had kidney problems when they were doing the wall. I, we had a house in France near to the um, studio we all had houses there, and we had a pool. I was pregnant with our second child, Claire. And I was lying in on a lilo in the pool, and there's a certain time of the year that the wasps come and they need to drink. And I got stung three times and wound up having a um, crystal form at, at the exit valve of my kidney. And so um, I was, well, the whole family, David included, we're under the homeopathic care in, in London. And he called up Dr. Sharma because kidney pain, Phil, you know, it's really painful. So Dr. Sharma said to David, <laughs> um, call in the paramedics, the French paramedics, because they're homeopathic orientated. They don't fight it, at least England fought it quite a bit then were well, the orthodox doctors the queen the royal family is into homeopathy anyway um they came and they said oh she's going to have to have her kidney out and the baby and we called Doc dave was doing all the calling he called dr shaman he said get her, get her on a plane i'll put her in my clinic so he said, give her a shot. I didn't drink then and I was a vegetarian. Give her a shot of brandy and a shot of, um, of um, champagne until she gets on the plane. <laughs> that was a lot of weeks. And um, 
the Floyd were on a, a tax exile, so David couldn't come back very often. And eventually we met in Ireland when Dr. Sharma said I could probably go to L.A. because the Floyd were moving everything to L.A. to finish the album. And I was getting on in my pregnancy. So we met up in Ireland. <laughs> and just to see how I would be outside. And I remember we went to this restaurant. David had gone on their little break to Lindos because we were working on a house that we bought. And um, in Lindos, the kids always could run into the restaurants and say hi to the chef and be in the kitchen and do whatever. They were free. Well, we're in Ireland and we're in a restaurant and Alice just goes wandering off and we're chatting away and next thing you know, the maitre d' is bringing her back. He can, could you keep your child from going into the, into the, was it? Sorry. I just pulled the blank into their kitchen. So different strokes and we got to um, LA had a lovely house on Rodeo Drive. And there we were. I had to have an air conditioning unit, which is always in America, an ion machine and an air filter. And I had to stay in my bedroom during that time. I didn't go out because LA was really polluted then. So that's another story about the kidneys. Albie, my f favorite um, art medium, I think is really oils. Because it you can, you have transparent, translucent and opaque. And because I know that colors are on different levels so that you have opaque colors that reflect the light coming at you and then I put glazes in between and if I want to travel then optically I can do that with oils because you can layer you know the translucent and the transparent so that whenever a person's looking at my art in the subconscious realm of their vision, they're seeing something that represents more of what we are, etherically and physically. Um, often when I just see um, acrylic paints, it's like I, I want to look behind to see what's behind it, because it's plastic and it's the light's just coming back. And I, I could use that for the material level of just light coming back. But even in oils on the opaque, you still have light traveling through. The time that I find it um, easier to accept an acrylic is when you use an airbrush because that's putting out space in between the molecules of color. Yep, Erica, sunset is around seven. Erin, what am I reading these days? I'm finally reading The Stones of Venice. It's marvelous. I sent that to you. That was your birthday present, I think, or Christmas, something like that. I haven't read that yet. I need to do that. I'm finding that um, I'm not reading, reading very much. I'm creating and cooking and doing my audio books. But I have a pile, pile of books to read. One of the ones that's next to my bed is called The Letters of Helena Rorick. And she was um, the wife of um, Nicholas Rorick, a painter, a Russian painter that I like very much. And she, there her letters to her um, disciples, so to speak, or people who would ask her different healing, spiritual questions. And their time of life was very interesting. They, at one point, 
they were going across, the, is it a desert in Russia? Siberia? Any, I know, because Siberia is really cold. Nicholas, on his horse, had an easel. And he was painting every day as they traveled through until, of course, this, the rain the rain came and the snow came and the blizzards. They lost a lot of animals and stuff. But it's, um, he's really special. And I find it very inspiring reading her letters. Yeah. Torsten. If you had the chance, would you do everything the same way again? Well, I think I'd be a bit wiser. I don't know what life would have waiting for me from that point of view going back. I'm happy that I believe in myself and life has brought me to that point. So really, I, I don't think I could answer that question really. Alan, thank you for your comment. So, let's see. We've got 10 more minutes. Dessa Shepherd, hi. Are you a citizen of the US still? Can you vote is what I'm actually asking. And yes, I am. And I have voted. You're allowed if you're um, an expat, they call us living across the ocean and they've set up this special um, system to where we are allowed to email um, and request a ballot form but then we have to post it special delivery and I did that two weeks ago and Claire and I know Sarah has um, also been involved with that because they have passports they're like half and half I don't know if Matthew's going to vote. He, uh, you know, it's like I saw, I saw this meme the other day of a face mask with the letters in it. Mother, should I trust the government? Well, what I have to say to that is that in Stranger and the Strange Land by Heinlein, there was an elder and a young person that could, was going to it was voting day and so the elder said to him are you going to vote he said no 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 there's their load of rubbish you know I, I'm. and the man said to him well I just want you to think about something there isn't much difference between good and better but there's a hell of a difference between bad and worse so get out and vote people if you're American the world needs you to do that and America needs you to do that. And let's hope for the future. Alvie, I d um, she said that she's not much of a reader and she thinks maybe I should read more. Well, in esoteric philosophy that I had followed for many years and that set up um, a path and they say you need to do service, study, and meditate. So reading, if I read it, I need to have it so that it's opening up more wisdom of the wise people in the world. And sometimes it allows me just to relax because that's wise too. So find a balance. Drew. Hi Ginger, I'm also an artist and was just diagnosed with cancer. Painting is so medicinal for me. I go to that place of peace when I'm creating. You know, Drew, when you're creating and you're in that space, your energy is flowing through your body and that's healing. So I would say that as you go into, before you start, Ask for that healing energy of your soul and your higher 
being to heal you. Or better than that, say, may I be the best that I am to be. So, Pat G, I'm loving your book. I knew already. Well, I'm really happy for you. <laughs> it's it's um it's my journey to discover my purpose in life. And then I love even on a deeper level and I I know that there's an even deeper level that we can all go to. I mean this human body is an incredible, I hate to use the word, machine. It's one of the best machines in the whole world that man seems to have created trying to emulate it. And there's some great machines out there. Someone gave David a badge once that said, he who dies first with the most amount of toys wins. And, um, Musicians seem to really love their gadgets, but look what they create with it. So go for it. Yeah. Verpi, I um, like to write poetry too um, and read it sometimes. But as I said earlier, I have so much that I have to create and I'm not, and it takes a while for the glazes to uh, I dry so that I could then paint on top. It's just, and go on. Nothing is ever fast. It's so, I don't have time to read poetry now. I did in college. Um, if that's what you love, and I can see why it would be for you, then great. Phil, yes, we did fly on Concord. That was an amazing experience. Shame it's so noisy. But I um, came back from New York with baby Alice in a um, Moses basket and back to London. It was what, only three hours? And it, the jet lag was a different experience. It was really surreal to, oh my God, I'm here. I didn't get worn out on the plane. And I know David did too, but not we didn't do it together. The seats were a bit like rickety uh, metal lawn chairs, but I didn't mind. We got here, and it is a beautiful plane. Never mind. I'm glad I experienced it. Well, Daniela, I'm happy to see you, and uh, that you could you're enjoying this. Yeah. Okay, we got four minutes, people, and um, you can buy my book on um, gingergilmore.net and then well it's actually shop gingergilmore.co.uk and then there are the audiobooks through Patreon and then there are my art classes which are five lessons that first give you the principles that the Zoom classes after that will um, make it easier for you to do this type of drawing that I learned with Cecil Collins. So, um, Aubrey, I think Bally would, that's for sure. So have a really good week. And, you know, you could um, send me some message with some questions. I would be happy to answer them on inquiries at gingergilmore.co.uk I hope I got it right we have to remember all kinds of things don't we I mean the password trip is insane <laughs> oh my goodness our world so 
what really goes through my head is Matthew Gilmore's song that's not out yet, but he plays it on his lives of so long. It's time to fly. Thank you, Dee, for, do you know, you can go on my website because there's a lot of things that are for sale. That's for sale too, if anyone wants to um, take it home. A long time ago, I had to learn to let go of my paintings because they're really meant for the world and to be out there because they're like ion machines that radiate a certain vibration. I've seen people respond to me about that. So they're calling the world, take me, take me, give me a new home. So I'd like to say thank you again. Yes, Pat, Matt lives in Austin. So long, Tim, is in, in my ear warm too. It's, and do you know, it was this morning and all day was... um. Red, white, and blue, though he calls it color. I just red, white, and blue. What have you done with your soul? Yeah, amazing prophetic song. I think CNN should have it, him play it. You need to uh, get it out there for people to hear it. So long then. How nice, Drew, that it works that way. Be well, everybody. Be safe. And um, vote, please. <laughs> and uh, be creative as well. And we'll speak next week. Thank you for coming. And um, thank you, Matthew Gilmore, for fixing my volume this week. Because last week it was, um, you couldn't hear, some people couldn't hear me. I hope it worked this week, but um, so long and have a good week. Yeah, love you all. See you next week. Good night. I'll get it together. Here it comes. Bye.